Thank you, Dr. Lord. As Dr. Lord has so eloquently uh, put it and, and shared so many of these uh, very illuminating statistics, training and preparing this generation's group of college graduates is different than it was 10 years ago, and it will become increasingly different as we go forward in the next 10 years. We can look at the statistics, and believe me, I have and I had uh, prior to coming to Armstrong back in 2009. But I don't think anything prepared me quite as much for the reality of what we're facing as a wonderful reception that was held on a beautiful September Sunday that first year in 2009. It was a celebration that was specifically set up to celebrate our Goizueta scholars. These are students who were going to be able to go to college because they had competed for and won scholarships from the Goizueta Foundation. They had gathered together with their, with their parents and with the rest of their families, and they were excitedly talking about the beginning of the school year. And when I say they were excitedly talking about the beginning of the school year, most of them were not speaking in English. They were speaking in very rapid fire Spanish. So as I walked around the room and tried to engage them in conversation, it was very often that the young students whom we had just um, begun uh, with were the ones who were actually interpreting the conversation. So that was, that was very eye-opening. That day was not the beginning of a partnership. But rather, it was the culmination in many ways of partnership that had been going on for some time to get those students and their parents to Armstrong. It required that, that we were working very closely with high school guidance counselors, that we were working carefully with our community leaders, that we were working carefully with funding agencies, all in the same direction, trying to create opportunity for some deserving students. You know, the, the statistics that Dr. Lord has spoken about are very familiar. They're the tip of the iceberg, uh, and one of the things that we deal with on a regular basis in, in the coastal area of Georgia. In fact, from 2000 to 2010, the census data show us that the population of Hispanic Latinos in our area grew 70, 78%. That far surpasses the growth of any other population group. And if we look at Savannah, Chatham County alone, it is more than 166% during that time. So this is a population that is very important to address for obvious reasons, and we cannot do it alone. One of the things that's become very clear to me in the last few years is that Armstrong, on its own, cannot do it by itself. Partnerships are key. Partnerships are key, and also visionary leadership and passionate leadership is also very important. That's why Armstrong is so fortunate to have in its midst Melody Rodriguez. Melody is actually the director of our Hispanic Outreach and Leadership at Armstrong program, OLA. Melody is so successful, not only because she is bright and very energetic, but because her history actually emulates so much or is very much predictive of so much of what we see in, in our students cur currently. Melody, you see, is, was originally uh, born in Venezuela. And when she was a young child, her parents migrated to the United States, which was a great thing, and they did it so that there would be opportunity for her and her siblings. Now, the life that Melody encountered was not without some bumps, and at some point along the way, Melody actually decided to drop out of high school. I won't go into all the meanderings that got her back on, on path, but needless to say, today she is pursuing a doctoral degree in educational leadership. So she has been very, very focused in making a better life for herself. But I will tell you that focus is not only on Melody. That focus is on so many other students as well. Melody not only sees that she needs to craft a way forward for herself, but she knows that if, in fact, we do not address that huge population of Latinos that are out there, we will never, we will never reach the graduation goals 
that have been set out for us. So at this point, it is indeed my pleasure to introduce to you the Director of Hispanic Outreach and Leadership at Armstrong, Melody Rodriguez. Thank you, Dr. Blyken. Um, that was a kind introduction. I want to uh, also say that um, I am not the only example of this. We do have some eager um, people in the community that are ready to go ahead and assist Latino students. Um, we're going to go ahead and present um, a video for you to give you some highlights of the last 10 years of work reaching Latino populations at Armstrong. In the past 10 years, Latino Americans have grown to become one of the largest ethnic groups in the United States. To keep pace with the demands of America's ever-changing demographic, Armstrong has become one of the nation's most successful colleges in the recruitment and retention of Latino students. Ten years ago, our university's Latino student body was only 2.7%. Those students had no cultural expression or community presence on campus, and support systems were minimal. The course of our evolution changed direction due to the efforts and the vision of Armstrong's recruiter, Melody Rodriguez, who created OLA, the university's first Hispanic outreach program. Beginning in 2003, we began targeting Latino population clusters throughout Georgia by traveling from county to county presenting recruitment materials to young people who had never been courted before. In addition, we hired another recruiter who was fluent in Spanish, conducted presentations entirely in Spanish for students' parents, translated enrollment documents into Spanish, and built a Hispanic outreach website with bilingual options. These efforts paid off as more Hispanic students began to come to Armstrong and they would do more than just pursue a degree. Students like Maribel Gomez and Andres Escolar became program organizers and campus leaders. In 2004, Latino Heritage Week was created. Suddenly, the entire campus was enriched by the vibrancy of Latino culture through art, music, lectures, and food. In 2007, students pushed to form Armstrong's first Hispanic fraternity, Phi Yoda Alpha, Inc., and the first Hispanic sorority soon followed. Everyone was witnessing the maturation of a close-knit community that only encouraged more Latino students to enroll. Success begat success, and by 2008, enrollment grew to almost 4%. More outreach and support activities were created as we began to host monthly lunch and learn sessions featuring Hispanic community leaders, started an annual fundraiser for Latino student scholarships, and conducted day-long workshops for high school students and parents on admissions and financial aid. Through the years, OLA organizers and students have received numerous awards and special recognitions for their groundbreaking work. At the center of all this success, we began to benefit from a fresh new surge in student life and school pride. Jair Munoz and Maribel Gomez recognized the value of OLA. When I came here, OLA empowered me, and I wasn't scared to stand up and say, this is what I believe, this is what I know. Uh, for the first time in my life, uh, that I, I wasn't scared to do that, so I think that Ola is doing a great job. I feel a lot of gratitude towards Armstrong. Uh, it's been one of the best experiences in my life. Ola helped me tremendously. Ola helped me stay focused, stay motivated to continue and finish my degrees. Because of that, um, I have the job that I have now. Although Armstrong's general student body grew significantly in the last 10 years, Latino student enrollment grew even faster. By 2012, they had comprised over 6% of the total enrollment. That is a growth of 200% from 2002 to 2012. But we are only beginning. In 2011, Armstrong received a major grant that applies a comprehensive approach to recruiting Latino students. And this time, the university won't be working alone. We are reaching out as a lead institution, collaborating with Savannah State, Savannah Tech, and the public school systems to accomplish a very ambitious goal. Through the Camino program, we seek to double the number of Latino college students enrolling in these colleges in the next four years. By 2022, Armstrong has made a commitment to see its Latino population grow to 10% of the total student body. Armstrong has come a long way, yet we have only just begun. Although we are transforming the lives of these talented young students, they in turn are transforming Armstrong, challenging us to redefine ourselves and to impact the nation in ways we never thought possible. Great. 
I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, this just highlights a lot of the work that we have done. Um, the last um, segment of that is referring to Camino. Camino is a Latino um, student success program initiative that's being funded by Lumina Foundation. And I want to thank um, Jim Applegate for their support of the project. We are one of 13 sites in the nation that is um, strategically and intentionally and aggressively seeking out more um, Latino graduation. Um, I challenge your institution to do the same. Uh, we can certainly benefit from that, and Complete College Georgia cannot be reached without um, significantly increasing the completion rate of our Hispanic and Latino students in the state. And we welcome some questions later, and I'll go ahead and turn it over to our presentation um, from the Atlanta Technical College. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. <clears throat> I am always delighted to talk about successful programs at Atlanta Technical College, and today is certainly no exception to that. Um, the picture you see, the presentation that I'm making today um, is about the Atlanta Technical College Institute for Males. Isn't that a good looking picture? I think that was our first or the second group of um, students who were enrolled in our Institute for Males program. And I didn't say this at the last presentation, but as I was talking with someone later, um, talking about how good they looked, as a part of this program, those students were dressed that way. And I don't know if you know, but I, well, for me, I don't know about you, but when I dress up, I feel better and I act better when I'm dressed up. If I'm sloughing around and, you know, with my baggy jeans on hanging down off my behind, you know, then I don't act quite the same as I do when I have on a suit or, or when I have a, a hat turned backwards. So um, they look good and there's a reason that they look good. That was by design. Um, I, I, we started this program um, back in, in 2009. But prior to that, I saw something occurring at Atlanta Technical College as Vice President for Academic Affairs and then again as President. I saw too often young men coming to register or to enroll or to apply, or to apply at Atlanta Technical College always being drugged by someone, either a mother, a aunt, a grandmother, sometimes a girlfriend, even a sister. Usually another woman was dragging them to register for school. And I wondered, why is that? The young ladies would come right along and they'd apply and I see people nodding because you probably see the same thing and you know register for school and do what they needed to do. And as I told the group before, I had noticed it in my own family. My daughter registered for school and did what she needed to do, but my son would come home and barely and say, I didn't register today because they didn't have the classes at the time I needed them. So I'd have to go and help him to find the classes at the time he really need, times he really needed them. So that showed me that there was a problem. Um, and the problem that I was seeing at Atlanta Tech was not just an Atlanta Tech problem or, an, or a problem in my household, but it was a problem nationally. I started to notice that national statistics supported the fact that young men, particularly African American males, were not going to school at the rate of their female counterparts or, or, even, or even their Caucasian counterparts. So we needed to, to do something about that. Um, and although I saw this problem, I didn't see a way out of it. And so I'm always talking about what's going on in Atlanta Technical College. And one of my foundation board members was listening to me very intently and uh, happened to have been on a flight to DC with someone. And he's always bragging about Atlanta Tech and that was no exception. And so Ken, Kenneth Hudson, who has now passed away, talked to this gentleman on the plane. And he said, you know, that sounds really interesting. Uh, why don't you tell them to apply for some money through the Department of Education to do that? I think we could probably help them. The rest is history. Atlanta Technical College in 2009 was awarded a $1.2 million grant to implement and start the Atlanta Technical College Institute for Males. And the Institute for Males was primarily to deal with that problem that I told you about earlier, uh, young men who were unable to navigate college successfully on their own. And so, as I said earlier, our problem, you know, is that we had a decrease in enrollment for African American males over the past 10 years at Atlanta Technical College. We, we knew that. Um, we also saw them unable to come to school on their own. We saw low retention rates. Um, we saw low graduation rates. 
um, with our African American males. And so we wanted to do something about it. And so as a result of that, our program um, was developed and we wanted to do two things with the Atlanta Technical College Institute for Males based on, on the research and based on what we'd seen um, with our own students. We wanted to simply increase male enrollment at Atlanta Technical College and we wanted to increase male retention at Atlanta Technical College. Our strategies to do that, we knew that we, um, if we wanted to impact enrollment, we needed to target high school students. We knew that if we wanted to impact enrollment, we had to speak to a population of people who are oftentimes forgotten, those people who have come in contact with the criminal justice system or who have had issues with drug abuse, but they keep going back and back and back, lapsing back, never able to move forward. So we knew that we would have to target that population as well. And then we knew that we'd have to work very, very closely with community organizations in order to um, be effective in our, in our goals. I wanna go back to that prison population a little bit and, and talk about it. Um, one of the things that we've learned from this program is that there's no cookie cut idea, there's no one size fit all. And so the beauty of what we do is that we're able to work very, very closely with the young men to determine what each really needs in order to be successful. Um, one of the things that we found we had to do a lot of was to help them to deal with criminal histories. And so sometimes they were thrust in a, in a, in a um, a, a spiraling out of control situation because they couldn't get a job. But a lot of times they didn't know that you could have your criminal record expunged if it wasn't so bad. So we had a lot of people who had small offenses, things that they did when they were younger, and they didn't realize that they could come move beyond that. So our counselors would help them to do that. Um, we also had volunteers that would help them to do that. So our strategy was really to meet the needs of individuals rather than to come up with these group ideas. If we wanted to impact retention, we knew that we had to work with um, the students who were currently enrolled at Atlanta Technical College. So for them, we had college life uh, skills workshops. We had something called the Ambassador Speak Series, and I'll go back to that in a moment, uh, academic tutoring, and we had intensive graduation counseling. Um, as I said earlier, Atlanta Tech couldn't do this on their own. We've had, we have a number of people who volunteer to work with us. And so Ambassador Andrew Young took an interest in the program and he started doing what's called the Ambassador Speak Series. And he comes in and he has intimate conversations with a small group of young men. We call it the Fireside Chat. And the first time he did it, I made the mistake of going and he let me know that he didn't realize I was going to be in the room, but I just was going to have to get over it because he was going to be very, very candid. And they talked about some things that typically young men would talk with their fathers about, but he was able to reach them and talk some about his own experiences, but give them some life advice on how to stay out of trouble, um, how not to become daddies prematurely. Um, and, and even if you became a daddy prematurely, the expectation that you take care of your children and what's important in life is that you develop yourself to the point of getting a career. So that Ambassador Speak series is just one of those um, strategies that we use kind of to the group, but it has worked well. We also had um, breakfasts, and that's not listed up there, but we would organize small group breakfasts with people who were men who were prominent in the community Community who had done well in their careers, and these young men would sit at the breakfast table with them and have small, intimate conversations. Um, and that was part of the mentoring to success part of it. Um, our enrollment over the three years averaged about 10% of the African American students who enrolled in a college annually were um, encouraged to become a part of the AIM program. Um, our students were retained over the over a three year period, an average of 11% of African American students retained by the college annually were AIM students. 
um, from awards conferred, you see that we had a steady increase, increase in the number of awards conferred over the three-year period for AIM students, and that had to do with that intensive work that we were doing, and that's a duplicated number. Um, in terms of our unduplicated graduates, you see that that to the AIM student, the number of graduates increased over the three-year period, an average of 12% of the African-American male students who graduated from Atlanta Technical College annually were AIM students. Another important part of what we did was to reach out to high school students. And in reaching out to high school students, we um, had a six-week summer leadership camp for 11th and 12th grade males. And during that leadership camp, we focused on career and college exploration, entrepreneurship, financial literacy, and leadership development. And I told a group earlier, if we did nothing but have all those young men on campus with their pants pulled up at the same time, we made a, a huge accomplishment. The first group I looked out at, and, so, and they policed themselves. If somebody had their pants hanging down too low, you could see another one say, man, pull your pants up, pull your pants up, she's watching. So it was a great. Um, looking at the six-week leadership um, uh, camp, the first year we had 100 students involved in a leadership camp, and the next two years we had 50 students because we had to cap it uh, because our funding started to decrease over the, over the years. But over the last three years, an average of 55% of the African-American students who, African-American male students who attended the summer leadership camp enrolled into a two- or four-year institution upon graduation from high school. Our future, um, we are looking closer at career development activities and support and job placement and follow-up. And then I just want to end because I always like to put um, a real face to a program because you, you know, we can talk about statistics all day, but the experience that individuals have in a program oftentimes um, surpass any statistics that I can give you. So there's a student who was in our AIM initiative who we didn't ask to do this, but one day I was sitting at my desk and I received a letter from him. And uh, it brought me to tears, but I'm going to sh share it with you because it really does speak to the impact that this program have, has. Here at Atlanta Tech, you're not just a student, and this is in his own words, but an individual. ATC and AIM make the relationship with you personal. I entered Atlanta Technical College from the streets of Atlanta where a moving train was my place of residence. My classes were hard but fun, my instructors stern but fair. This is my story of what Atlanta Technical College and AIM have done for me. They say you can teach an old dog new tricks. As a future chef and graduate of, of ATC, I have learned a new trick that trick is education. Thank you, ATC and AIM, for caring and helping me to secure my future. Now, I have to fast forward. This was about a year ago, and I'm going to fast forward that to this year. This young man has not only done what he needs to do at Atlanta Technical College, but he has sent, brought, since brought his daughter, who is enrolled in Atlanta Technical College. She has a little boy who is now enrolled in the Atlanta Technical College Child Care Center. So it is truly an impact on generations. Um, at Atlanta Tech, we have a saying that's, you know, at Atlanta Tech, we change lives, one student at a time, one family at a time. And this is an, a, a classic example of that change in lives that we've done with families through the Atlanta Technical College Institute for Males. Thank you.